the dominant commercial on everything I watch. Oh, oh my God. Have you priced a car lately yeah. or a truck? Oh, uh, yeah. I've been looking. Yeah. I've, I just got out. I'm not getting rid of my truck. I love my truck. But I thought, let me just go look. Because I'm getting 100. I'm getting close to 150. It's like, I might need mm-hmm. to start driving this on the weekends or something like that. Right. Just sold the Mustang. So I'm looking to put something else maybe in the mm-hmm. driveway. Dude, a truck seventy grand oh, yeah. new, a regular yeah, old truck that yeah. was thirty five thousand yeah. dollars, like a truck seventy grand. Currently have, they don't even make the truck that I currently have. They've quit making single, single cab pickups. You can buy a work truck version of it. Ah. Ford makes one and Dodge makes one. I don't think Chevy makes one anymore. They might, they might not. I hadn't seen, I haven't been able to find one. Um, but everything was it was like my older truck, and I think I paid thirty five thousand dollars for that mm-hmm. ten years ago, brand new. Dude, now, that truck you, is seventy grand now. So oh, this yeah. is a, this is a new new like off the lot. New off the lot. Okay. See, I don't even look. If at you new can vehicles. find one on the lot, if you right can't, and yeah. then I went and looked at one of the car reseller things. Mm-hmm. Everything there was just as much as new. It was oh, like yeah. sixty seventy grand. So, They're offering Toyota's offering me twenty six thousand for my used car. Right. right. Well, yeah. that's what got yeah. me thinking. I thought, okay, let me go look my truck up. So I found my truck, which is a fourteen. Um, with the equivalent miles, it's five thousand dollars more than what I paid for it. You know, if I right. could find something else, mm-hmm. I'd give it to him for, <laughs> for an yeah. extra five thousand. Right. I have because I've had this truck. I have now. It's probably I've had this vehicle probably longer than any vehicle that I've owned probably in the last twenty years. Right. So, and I like my truck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I, I the this truck is a crew cab. So, and I tend to buy things because for me it's functional mm-hmm. because i'm usually carting my my folks around or Makes somebody sense. so why you know why look at anything else but i i can't really get myself to even entertain the idea of looking at another suv again yeah i just i'm not there so i have been looking at new vehicles or no uh, at replacement vehicles but i i haven't looked at a new car yeah. cost and like forever oh, you're missing it bro so yeah. but uh one of my one of my family members was like hey if you did like and i know this is going to get sam's attention when i bring this up is so my my cousin said something about you know, doing a home equity loan mm-hmm. and i was and right in, right now there when i there's certain basic metrics mm-hmm. that i look at that say nope don't get no fucking loan Particularly the, if you don't have a fucking job. Yeah. Now it's not that I don't have. It's not that I not that I don't have. Is that sources the part of, I'm supposed to be sensitive to? No. I, no I, fi- I figured you would bring up the part about uh, your your de- most deal most recent dealings with a home equity loan. So, and I don't you know because of my dabbling in finances and stuff, but not to your level. But knowing, hey, this is this is a good move versus this is a bad move. And I always always have like a plan B, C, D. Yeah. Sadly, interest rates are so low, you're mm-hmm. unlikely to get the tax benefit off uh-huh. your home equity loan. But if you're already um, able to claim your mortgage interest, uh-huh. then instead of getting a car loan, assuming you have to get a loan to get the vehicle anyway, home equity might be appealing because it's adding potential interest that you may be able to claim on your taxes. Well, right. You're not going to be able to claim. So you could write all that off. Yeah. Huh? That's yeah. pretty See, smart. And like for me, you know, people were going, oh, you know, I'd go, I would go do a, you know, home equity loan for like 50 grand. I'm like, why? I was like, I didn't even pay that much for the fucking vehicle I have now. So to do the disclaimer, this show is not responsible for financial yeah, advice right. or yeah, giving yeah. financial advice. That's funny because. Any, um, any, any opinions you might hear here are I, taken all I, on your I own merit. I specifically am not a CPA, <laughs> not pretending to be a CPA, uh, no, nor an attorney. What's funny, I just wanted to have some fun with that. With you saying that is the, the, the stock trading groups that I'm on. Yeah, they all say that. Just crap. about everybody is, that's their It's not caveat, financial advice. Yeah. Is, I didn't realize just. That, that somebody could read your shit and the fact that you don't put something else there if oh, they yeah. d- decide to take your advice that they think they have even a chance of suddenly fucking hold you responsible for their it's fucking It's not the failure. fact that they can win or lose. It's just the fact that they drug you to court. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of companies that do that just to do it. They're very litigious nowadays. Yeah, everything's yes. a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good point. I mean, and I have yeah. seen that. I mean, to, like, to me, it's... I, mm. I look at it going... I, I see the lit- litigious part mm-hmm. only because it's like even for just the most minor of things is if you get because really a, a, to me a lawyer is looking at 
whatever you know scenario you bring up to them, mm-hmm. and they look at it as a strategy. Hey, can I fucking sell this? You know? Billable hours. Yes. Billable That's hours. That's exactly what it is. And it also, too, it ties your company up. Yeah. Because you can't make any moves while you're in this litigation. You're kind of stuck. You're like in a time capsule. And it's this bullshit. You know, it, it depends on what kind of, from what I'm understanding, this is something, it's funny you mentioned that. So I watched a, a video this morning, um, and this is not going to be a gun conversation as much as it is a lawyer conversation. Okay. I watch a lot of firearm videos on YouTube. That's kind of my thing. We were talking about watching YouTube. So there's a company called, you know what, I'm not going to name the company. There's a company that makes a trigger, okay? Yeah, yeah, let's, and, yeah like, that's smart. And, and what what's come of this is, the and it's a, tr- it's a trigger system that's like, tens of thousands of other trigger systems out there it's like a binary type trigger system and the atf has sent them a cease and desist they said okay this is a machine gun no more making it cease and desist Mm -hmm. and the company came back with a lawyer and said wait a minute you know here's where these are all approved these are approved on your letterhead and we're not going to stop and basically they're going to keep making the trigger in defiance of the ATF request for them to mm-hmm. cease and Good desist. Good Until their dog dies. Yeah, exactly. exactly yeah. It's, it's an interesting, they're they're going to court with it. Um, it'll be interesting to see how far and how fast the ATF moves on this. It's interesting. And this is any government. I'm not saying picking on ATF. Is This could be any government entity at this point. But it's interesting to see that this company is now starting to, to defy um, – I guess what would be considered a government order. Um, so the progression is going to be uh, a raid by the uh, IRS. Probably. What will end up happening is that because you've defied and you've taken it to some level of court, they're just going to kick in your doors, confiscate all your paperwork. They're going to audit all your paperwork. ATF is going to audit them. IRS is going to audit them. They're, they'll, it's a it's a full blown governmental. It's, yeah, it's a full blown governmental. Then again, thing. I mean, look at where we went with Lois Lerner and all that. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there was a lot of successful lawsuits that came out of that, but nothing happened to her. She's well, look at the eighty percent guy. Yeah. Well, what happened to him? I, I'm not up to speed on that guy. And the, the thing no, is, is particularly with this particular with this ad- current administration, mm-hmm. and sort of its view on firearms. Period. Well, now you got the CDC that's threatening mm-hmm. to regulate firearms. I, I yeah. just so read. I just read recently what the CDC mm-hmm. director's comments were about what she believes the CDC's role is yeah. in gun violence. Right. That and housing. They've, they, they've taken a keen interest in housing, in, in particular whether you pay rent or not. Right. Uh, it, it's funny how they're. I mean, like I said, this is not necessarily a firearms conversation as much as it is well, a legal conversation with well, the government. It's the overreach trying to, of government. Yeah. Exactly. It, CDC and housing makes about as much sense as fucking NASA and Islam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rockets to the moon, my friend. <laughs> That's funny. I almost forgot about that. Yeah. But I, I, I saw a deal today. Um, the IRS has um, put forth a, a plan uh, to the Democrat Congress to lower the threshold for bank reporting back to the IRS. Oh, wow. Oh, Oh, yes. I saw that. Currently, that threshold is over $10,000 in cash, but they're they're proposing to lower the threshold to $600 transaction. Yes. That's insane. So the bank is essentially going to turn over your bank records in toto to the IRS to review. Okay, so the but the in the driver there is to make sure that people are paying their fair share of taxes. That that that's the that's the rationale. But yes. they're essentially going to have your entire bank history to so, go through. So yes. where this is going, I, so I can tell you where this is going for them. Mm-hmm. And I know we've had this conversation off mic before, and your financial advisor said, eh, "That's nothing." But yes. this is going back to because I'm starting to hear it more and more now. The wealth tax, your ownership of of items right. and things like that. That's why they're wanting to know because they can come question you. What did you do with this six hundred dollars? Where'd you take it and what'd you buy? Yeah. So it, it's going to prevent those kind of. It's going to prevent you from hiding those kind of transactions. So I just recent, like Friday, I had I to spend it on wheat, man. Friday, Friday, <laughs> I had to uh, handle my parents' uh, financial business with their with their uh, IRA manager or whatever, and I brought that question up again about hey where do y'all see this whole thing with you know where the government's taking you know trying to tax your your current IRA, your your IRA, IRA. yeah yeah because my deal about that I don't care that they they want to know what the balance is what I care about 
is when they want to tax <laughs> stuff on future uh, future earnings. Right. I haven't fucking earned the money. Yeah. But you can forecast how yeah. much tax. That's I'm a, going that's to. another one. Yeah, that's another one. And so, it's, it comes to anything that's in, it, it, that you can. Well, they're going to make you forecast it and pay it. And then you're gonna fight like hell to get it back if they owe you. Yeah, and that's that's bullshit. Well, I, I, I don't know. even I don't even see them fucking refunding it. No. Yeah. That's the whole idea. We spent that money. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just like the driver's tax Many in California. Years ago. Yeah. 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 When you had when you they had it proposed where when you go to the gas station, you punch in your number, then you punch in your mileage. Yeah, that's right. And then they were gonna tax you on the mileage you drove. So did that come to fruition? No, uh, I don't know. It didn't happen. I mean, I can't. You know, I'll get a fucking horse. Yeah. I mean, well, I swear to God, I'll get a fucking horse. And, and this shit's going to get really we'll stupid cow, we'll really cowboy quick, up man. quick. Yeah, because I was thinking the same thing. is Because it kind of feeds into my current uh, ideology about, you know, whenever I do go back to, to work, is part of me wants to sort of stay sort of in my immediate area. Yeah. Um, only because, first off, why overlook a viable employer that's in the area that will pay you, you know, whatever skill set you have, at your you know previous you know yeah. level or whatever. Yeah. So if I can fucking ride to work or walk to whatever it is, that means that I'm also not paying fucking taxes. It's, you're you're uh, walking into a completely different work environment than you left. I can tell oh, you right I, now. Oh, I I'm already well I can tell you right now. You're they're going to be a checklist of shit. HR has pulled all kinds of stuff out of the hat now. Yeah. Right. And HR is definitely driving this thing. And you're gonna there's a checklist that you're not going to like. Oh, I, when you, I, I'm when you, well aware as, a, well as aware. a condition of employment. But the side tangent also is because sort of employment world has become so contentious to me, it makes sense that, Hey, if you can create a fucking side gig mm -hmm. that supplements some form of income, but that's what they're after. We're back to that only fans conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true yeah oh, very nice, true nice segue yeah I figured you'd that like is... that Graham <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll dance for money <laughs> you probably get paid excuse yeah. me probably get paid excuse too. Mr. Graham but why do you have a fucking red bow as a ride off <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's a valid work expense oh my god what, what room do you use yeah. in your house what, what's this primarily swing? for your home base business this swing for $400 what are we talking about doing so, here so in reality though because which is funny no. but so lately I've been you know I never buy anything new mm -hmm. so I, I've been purchasing like used musical equipment just because it keeps me busy at home. Yep. So I recently, so, but I did have that thought <clears throat> is I like the fact that I have some of this stuff because at some point I might be able to, if it, if I ever head towards the direction I'm going is, I mean, even if it's in some minimum capacity, I can still write off some of the things that I've, you know, forked over money for and maybe get, get it back in some way. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, would you do it? Would you do an electric bike? Have you thought about that? Oh, I, I mean, I've looked. I've, yeah. I've really been looking would, at those I'd hard. I've um, been looking yeah. at those hard lately. You know, I know we've had bike conversations no, on nice, here yeah. behind, on here before, and they're becoming more affordable. They too. are, and they're going longer distances. I've, I've found one that'll travel at sixty miles an hour. Mm -hmm. This is purchasable. You can purchase yeah, this I'm in the so U.S. Sure, if I've been one where riding a bike at sixty miles oh, an hour, man, it looked like fun. Uh, when does it become a motorized <laughs> vehicle? It falls under DOT. It, it actually anything over twenty two <laughs> miles an hour. Because right. like I would kind of think if particularly if you're on a sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. you know if you're on a sidewalk that you wouldn't be able to exceed a certain see certain mile per so hour. So there's there's different classes of them. Any the, the the class that you can pretty much ride anywhere without a license is a bike that goes twenty two miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Um and I believe that's considered what they call a class A, if I'm not mistaken, a class A electric bicycle. Okay. All right. Um but they have one, getting back to it, they have one that travels 120 miles on one charge. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. But yeah. you can carry up extra battery pack and plug it in. And this thing had yeah. like two batteries on it already. Yeah. I mean, you could tell they they were going for distance with this yeah, thing. Yeah, because I ran into a couple that they had uh, two battery packs each. Yeah. That they way, run two motors. Yeah. Well, They, they run, run a front motor well, and a rear motor. They had extra batteries in the back. Right. I, I, and I, I, they right. can change them halfway. Right. Huh. This one that they've got now, you can put saddlebags on it. I guess mm -hmm. you could carry a battery. The batteries are big. Mm -hmm. But you got 120 miles out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, if you think about that, if you live close enough, you could drive that all week and just charge on the weekend. See, that's you know? exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. And um, Or charge it while you're at work. I think it had like a quick charge time of like two hours. So yeah, because there's a bike work. called the Quick Cat. 
They're yeah. quiet cat, I mean, that hunters use. They yeah. sell them to hunters. So it's a camouflaged uh, off-road bicycle mm-hmm. that's motorized. And they use it for hunting. Okay. And instead of taking a four-wheeler in, you just take a bicycle in. How are you going to carry your freaking... So they make a, uh, a, a thing that goes... A single-wheel dolly that goes on the back uh-huh. that attaches like kind of like a child carrier. I've and seen you, those things. And you can We've tow them out. There. Yeah. yeah. You can tow it out. Just drag them out, man. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I would run that route. If I was going to yeah. do something close by and not yeah. have to worry about a fuel tax or something yeah. like that... Yeah. I, mean, that's, that's, I got that's a feeling though, dude. I, 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 there's dudes sitting in a room figuring this shit out. Oh, they're gonna find a everything. Way. Yeah, they're gonna find. A I way mean, the fact that you're breathing air is, pi- and they can't charge you for it's pissing them off. Right. I mean, that's that's just the kind of people we have running these things. Right. Um, somebody posted a really great video the other day of George Carlin talking about, um, you know, they can only get away with things if you let them. Yeah. Talking about taking your rights away and all this other stuff. You know, and that, that's kind of, uh, you know, I'm there. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny you said that. So in part of our conversation here, I was going to bring this up and we got past it and I didn't get to say it, but somebody was bringing up the point of you have all this intervention. What is it that you do? And they brought up the point. It's like, just do what Rosa Parks did. Say no. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, if enough people sure. say no, right. like Rosa Parks, then you don't have the problem. Well, you got that with, with parents right now with schools. Yeah. The, the, it's hard to hide those videos of all those parents protesting school boards. Right. So what's going to happen next is those people that are on those boards live within your community. You're going to start denying them service. Yeah. Well, that's already kind of yeah. going on now. But the problem is, so I heard this, I heard a really good round table discussion about that. And they were saying, okay, so let's just deny them services and let's not do this. And the question was, well, did you like it when they did it to conservatives? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, that's the counter argument to it. How did you feel when they did that to a conservative? Well, yeah, that's not their right to do it. I said, well, then you gotta, you gotta, you know, it's hard to be that way. Yeah. If you're not going to be fair. Well, that about comes it. down to that civics conversation that we always mm-hmm. have, and and that what we used to what we used to understand is, you know, I'll, I'll what, what was it they always said? I'll, I might not like what you say, but I'll, I'll die to the defend right the right for yeah. you to say it. Right. And we've lost that in society. It's in mainstream society. Yeah, that hasn't yeah, been yeah. taught in yeah. a long time. I think we've lost it in the. Uh, the mouthpiece, but not in the ears. What yeah. I mean, you know what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I that think that uh, the mouthpiece is what's the problem right now. Is you have, you have this runaway media. That, yeah, I mean, it's just media. literally just. I mean, it's created all kinds of problems, but the woke sector is really running out of ground to go to. They really are. Yeah, they're going to have to get heavy-handed in order to last. They're going to have to do something extremely heavy-handed, right? Because common sense is starting to wash them away a little bit. Yeah. You're seeing that a lot more, and it, it, you just it, don't hear it. But you, you don't. See it. Yeah, you see but it. But it's. I think people are starting to wake up a little bit. I saw a, a poll where our our commander in chief now has dropped in points oh, tremendously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He's down into the the low forties mm-hmm. on approval for. And pretty it much. doesn't even fucking matter. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But no, it it seems to be that that's all. I think you're right. Getting back to what you mm-hmm. were saying. They're it's they're losing favor and and it's yeah. it's becoming apparent to them. So yes, they're going to have to get heavy handed with it too. So you got to have an event, yeah, that creates a more of a control for yeah. them. So a national a national emergency of some type, well, or a um, you've well, just unleashed every terrorist in the world. So yeah, but I'm just like, saying it's going to have to be it's going to have to be to that level to where they can they can call. The martial law because right. that's really the only thing they got left well that's what I'm saying you you can have that event now that you no. have Afghanistan basically falling apart and saying terrorism is well, look at the hurricane. wide open let's look at hurricane for a okay. minute let's right. look at Ida so what you're not seeing is that there are so many people loading up and taking stuff to Louisiana yeah I mean citizens not just Mattress Mac and not just companies yeah but private citizens they have I mean literally they're showing up and building uh dining camps for these people yeah and they're bringing them all kinds of like showers and places to to help them because the government says you just need to leave evacuate don't come back yeah and the homeowners are going screw that (laughs) i'm going back so everybody's supporting that so texans are big on that right so they're going over there and they're bringing a lot of sustainability to that area they're bringing because you know the problem they're going to have is they're going to have labor problems they're going to have Material issues are going to have all sure. these problems. I mean, you got electricity for yeah. six weeks is what they're right. Well, cousin, they're getting some of it back up now. My yeah. cousin this morning, she's she's in Lafayette, yeah, and she was telling me 
that or she had posted last night that they had lost like power at mm-hmm. you know it was it, it wasn't because of like any um, storm that they were having it was just you know lull of the night and then bam mm-hmm. just went down well yeah you gotta figure they take lines down and all that stuff yeah, you hook yeah, stuff yeah because so. yeah, they lost every the, and you know and, and the, the, the sad thing is this, it's not really a sad thing it's actually a good thing is you can sit back and rethink your uh, your grid policy yeah I remember when Katrina happened um, and this is going back to a food thing so the first thing the government wants to get up is bread and water and milk. Those that, are the first. Things those are the first it. things they feel are the most sustainable. So they go to the largest manufacturers and they give them a subsidy, and they say, "Okay, what's your emergency plan?" And a large bakery over there, what they would, what they did was they brought in all the components to make white bread, and they stored it in their facility, mm-hmm. not realizing that their generators got flooded and knocked out. So nothing to so refrigerate nothing, it. So nothing survived. Yeah. And it was literally a biohazard at that point in time. Because I really think was. you really your refrigeration would need to be fucking mobile. Oh yeah. Well, so they have generators and they had all that set up, and so what they had is they had staged stuff away that was mobile at other facilities. Nice thing about commercial bread is there's there's pretty much a plant in every major city. Yeah. That's just the way they run. But um, but in New Orleans, all of them got knocked out, and all of them had this the same problem, and so the National Guard comes in. And the National Guard clears the building for them, and then they go in, and they start to clean it up. But it takes like two weeks. Right. Yeah. Because imagine these big, gigantic, 1,100-pound tote bags of yeast filling a room that got hot with yeah. warm air and water. It literally looked it, like... Yeah. That's a me- it's immediately mold right there, I would it think. Just, it just bloomed, bloomed. and just... Yeah. It was really bad. Yeah. And so, you know, when you look at uh, how you think of infrastructure, this go-around... They didn't do that. Yeah. They literally had things staged off site. So when they knew where it was going, this is where you're going to stage everything. So, I mean, but that's all done by local entities. I mean, you know, when you look at, um, uh, that's why it's important on who your governor is. That's important on who your county judges are. That's important. It's why it's important on who your emergency services people are. Mm -hmm. Those people have to be really spot on because when you're talking about, what is it? Three million, four million people. A lot of folks in that area. Yeah. I mean, it said one million without power, but you know, there's millions more affected by that in that area. Yeah. One thing you never hear about is Mississippi either, because they they, dude, they're like ants. They just pile on and they fix their shit and they're back up and running. Yeah. And they don't even they don't even make a wake about it. Right. And so you know you've got you've got a lot of a lot of effort now of people pitching in, pushing the government off to the side. And well, in that state, you do, and it's funny when you look at New York. I, I was listening in New York. That's on where the way we were going to go next. Yeah. yeah, I was listening in New York on the way over here, which had twenty-seven people die. Forty-one. Out of, one. Is that Total. what it's gone up to? Okay, they were saying twenty-seven. Yeah, yeah, because in their subway, t- their subway tunnels, yeah, were underwater. They only okay. had two or three in New Orleans die, or in losing six, something like that. Yeah, it was small it, number. It was, it was yeah. single counted on both hands. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, and it's funny that you say that. And her, her immediate, the new governor, I can't remember her name off the mm-hmm. top of my head, uh-huh. but the new governor there said, well, our, our, our results for the, out of this is we need federal assistance. We want $378 billion to fix our, our <laughs> infrastructure here. She immediately went to those guns, which I'm sure the, the Biden administration will hand it right over to her and say, here right, you go. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, but you got to think about how much is underground there. Yeah. I mean, you had yeah, it was people, all those basements, everything. Going oh, well, you yeah. had people in their basement apartments. I'm going, dude, get out. Yeah. At what well, point did the water get to where you said, I'm staying? This is, I'm, yeah. it's up to my waist. I'm staying. Yeah. Louisiana's death toll is 12. Okay. Yeah. It's when the co- when the coffee table is touching the ceiling. Yeah. That's when I'm it's thinking time about to leave. leaving. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I was watching, and, and I was watching videos of that, of those people, and I was like, dude get to higher ground yeah. i mean you know you're, you're in an apartment building go up the stairwell yeah something yeah i mean it was i, I didn't understand there the watching, their mentality I well really they were didn't. watching you were watching you know they all have storm wells in the ba- basements yeah. and you know they just start coming through the windows and start popping doors and i'm like dude i'm not i'm thinking the, if, if the water's so it is so high that you know first off if your t- feet are no longer touching the right, kick your legs, motherfucker. Your legs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, apparently, apparently it buried it. I mean, it buried it to the roof from what I understand. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. New York I, had some. I've seen, I've seen some of the photos. I, I just New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. But the government said stay in place. They did. Yeah. 
So there you and, go. And so they did. Yep. <coughs> so was, I don't was know. That the, a, was that a population control yeah. command or something? <laughs> so, well, the, the part that I found. Well, Como didn't kill with COVID. Point, it's going to kill At least blood. on the Weather Channel, they were talking about yeah. the big killer in the north yeah. were people in driving in high water. Yeah. yeah. But the focus on the news today is uh, people that are renting in basement apartments. Uh huh. Yeah, that's and everything how, that I heard. How that's the problem. Yep. Uh-huh. Not, not the fact that all the people are killed who drove into high water. Right. <laughs> so, so personal choice has nothing to do with it. It's a cause so, and effect. So, yeah. so what I'm hearing out of this is anything that the government tells you to do out of the state of New York, you should probably do the opposite. Opposite, of. yeah. Yeah, think about it with, with them killing all the old people and COVID. And uh-huh. You, you, your your best bet is to get as far away from government like as you New York's going to fucking waterboard their pa- pa- passive waterboard. They already, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. I mean, think about how big of an event that was. I mean, Ida, boy, she was a bitch. Yeah, I and mean, it was moving fast. Too. Yeah, it was, it was a, a lot of water, and, and it just it stayed pretty strong all the way up. It did. That was crazy. I, I was like, um, they said they had like 170 mile an hour winds in some spots yeah. in Port Fouchon, and I'm like, God dang, dude, that's like that's a gust. Now it's not sustained. That's crazy fast. Yeah. That's a lot of wind, man. Huh. Well, I'm glad it didn't come here because I, I well, was I was dreading that. Just think though, we're not we're not even through halfway through no, the season. We got ways to go. So I'm an avid weather watcher. I'm always posting weather stuff, yeah. and um, so I always go to the Navy fleets because naval fleets have some of the best weather uh, forecasting out there, okay. and uh, they give you the best long term stuff. <laughs> and uh, you you can go and look at their global fleet map and see where all these active storms are. And that Larry that's out there in the Atlantic right now, thank God that thing's going away north. Yeah. Because that thing is big. Huh. Uh, you look at that thing on a map. It, it seems was, like as the season rolls on, they start to move further up the coast, up, well, up the Atlantic we coast. Well, we have a big low pushing down where yeah. they're talking about getting their first snow up in Canada and Montana. That helps us yeah, out. Yeah, and it helps us a lot because that's pushing everything down. Because what helped us on Ida was the, the, the tropical storm that was going up the Baja coast. Yeah. So as they were tracking side by side, it started pushing Ida more to the east. Yeah. And then, and then that pushed that low just kind of popped right down the middle and kept her right there. Yeah. Just, I mean, that was we got lucky on that one because it could have went right over us. It could have. That would have been and, and that would have been, you know, because Lake Charles, my God. Yeah. I mean, East Texas and Lake Charles doesn't need another one of those. No, they're still rebuilding from the last one. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's yep. crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, the materials, I mean, you know, we were talking, Annette and I were talking about that the other day about um, here comes a flood of contractors again. We have friends that just bought homes before this happened. And they were paying a contractor to replace, you know, paint, floors, cabinets, stuff like that. Yeah. And those guys can't even get that shit right. They're having a fight with their contractors on. They all want this money up front, then they disappear. Well, then our so let's take our let's take our mutual friend here that works for a paint, uh, yeah. a big paint organization. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They are having problems locating, and this is all of them. He mm-hmm. says this is our company, the other big paint manufacturer right. in the United States. Nobody can get materials. Apparently, material. Uh, I, I'm having a hard time determining if this is a real thing or if it's a, a, a made up thing. Okay. But material costs for anything across the board are almost unsustainable. They can't get materials to make paint. That, that is a temporary problem. Yeah. I've been assured that that's not a. <laughs> <laughs> this is from 40% guy. I'm trusting him. That's fine. Well, so you got to remember where all this stuff comes from. You know, we used yeah. to make a lot of stuff here that we don't make anymore. Right, and which we were on the road to back making here again, but well, not anymore, we decided right? Not yeah, to vote decide for that. not to vote for that guy. Yeah, and so, um, so that's really a lot of problem because if you go to uh, the supply chain, which is a, a, yeah. a critical issue right now, you have all this backlog in China of for containers, right? Okay, and we're not exactly friends with those guys. They're re- we're really not. They're making global moves that are influencing our global moves. Sure. And I mean, Afghanistan has a lot to do with that. Yeah. And and so you start seeing this thing to where they are given the ability to either speed up or slow down. What do you think they're going to do? Well, so do you think that's and that's kind of where I was going with this. Do you think the supply chain dilemma is real, or do you think it's fabricated? Well, I think it's real. I think you it's do? real, but I think it's magnified. Okay. I think it's magnified at critical control points, like right now Conagra. Uh-huh. So Conagra is one of the largest consumer companies for food and you know so say for example um, they store grain on the ground well if it gets inundated with water it's ruined so yeah. that's is this the one you were talking about the other day yeah with, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and yeah. so what ends up happening is that 
they use the immediate action, but you're on a two-year futures buy. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. goes so, back to that Eddie Murphy movie. Goes, yeah, it goes back to the gap of when you're actually going to use the product versus when it's actually in stream. The problem they're having right now is the federal government is going to farmers saying, you're not going to plant this this year, you're not going to plant this next year. Right, because of government subsidies that they've taken to buy land. And right, and they're also going to, if they do go against them, they're going to tax them on it right. heavily. So you're basically, you're, you're creating a condition that could be construed as nefarious yeah in the sense of how do i control food because you have to remember um you have this big green deal going on yeah and they're at odds with cattle ranchers well they're at odds with protein farming basically right. pork beef so it's like the, is chicken that the vegetarian type? It's, it's a meat analog so yeah, it's yeah. it's a pro it's a soy based protein right, right. food replacement i was gonna say they, they're in yeah. favor of soy farms i bet you could get all the funds you want for well a that's soy why you've right seen now. dudes like uh, bill gates and all these people buying up all these farms yeah and which is really sad because you got you've got this whole and then you've got another issue happening with water table yeah so say if you have a landowner say you have a landowner that's purchased property and they realize that one of the largest water tables they can tap into that they can basically dry up other water tables around them yeah i mean this is getting but this is getting like fucking barbaric again yeah and and so you have all this going on now that that you as a as a, as a citizen don't see every day but you guys, just wake up one morning and your shit's gone i get reports every <laughs> i get reports and calls every day we're on conference calls talking about global commodities we're talking about supply chain right we're talking about the entire COVID has affected logistics drastically in many ways okay but it was a system that needed to be addressed and fixed in the first place it needed to be it needed to be fixed because of the uh just the inefficiencies of how we've been running business for a long time and so you got this you gotta it's just gonna be a train car effect of of shit happening that's gonna hurt us uh, on that side. Yeah. Well, apparently Lucy agrees. She heard you talking. Yeah, did you hear her? She's, she's barking. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's. That's the perpetual guard dog. She yeah. sits at the top of the stairwell, <laughs> and any movement outside, she lets you know what's going she's on. Got fucking Overwatch. Hey, she is. Did Rommel like your barbecue that you brought to him the other day? He did. He's a big fan of almost any food I bring. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a big.